Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the presentations for um, Life Orientation Life Skills um, 11 for DPPE and uh, BES. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is uh, Mr. Teddy Shukukuma. I am the, the tutor, and I will be with you in uh, an hour or so. Um, first of all, before we start, we, we start with the presentation, I would like us to have a look at the action verbs. The action verbs are not taken from any way apart from um, your books at the beginning of your modules. That's where I have taken these words. I want us to go through these words because these are the verbs that I used in order to construct questions. The questions that come in examination are actually, or in assignments, are actually formed or drafted using these verbs. That's why it's quite, quite important for you to know what does each verb mean. In this way, once we have an understanding of each of the verbs, this way you will be able to answer questions accordingly. Because if the question says analyze, then it will end up giving the definition. Then definitely out of, you are out of topic. But once you have gone through these verbs one by one and understand what each, mean, each means, you will be able to deal and to tackle the questions that will come your way. Uh, let's, let's look at the word, uh, the verb, uh, action verb, analyze. What does it mean? What is required from you? What is that you have to do? If the verb says analyze, you are going to examine information in detail. Examine the information that is given in detail. Then you present it in that way. The word calculate, which hardly comes in a subject like life orientation, life skills, uh, it's actually more on numerical forms, so which means that it's a, numer a numerical answer from the given figures. But it's quite hard. It doesn't really exist when it comes to life, life, life orientation, life skills. Comment. You might, be, you might meet a verb comment. What is that you have to do? Uh, you should discuss briefly by giving positive and negative points. So when you're commenting, you give the positive as well as the negative uh, side. Compare. That's also one of the, uh, the, the, the verbs that might come or that might construct a question in your course. So you must know what is that expected from you if you are to compare. What are you doing? You draw a conclusion about the similarities as well as the difference, differences. Similarities and differences. This is basically what you are going to look at if the word compare comes your way in a question paper. We continue with the action verbs. Contrast. Once more before we proceed, as I have told you, as I have communicated to you at the very beginning of this presentation, I said such verbs or such words, they are not taken from any way apart from your books. So therefore, you need to prepare on that. Contrast means look only for similarities. So basically, your issue is on similarities. If you are told to make the comparisons, compare, I mean to contrast, you are only looking for similarities but not the difference like in compa com comparisons. And the word or the verb criticize. Criticize you are required to give reasonable judgment after weighing facts. Carefully, so you have to weigh the to weigh the facts carefully that you are given, and then we'll be able to give the reasonable judgment after that. And then we have the verb uh, deduce. Deduce simply means you should use the information provided in order for you to reach to the conclusion. Use the information that is provided for you to reach to the conclusion. Define. What are you doing? And this is very, very popular. It's a very popular verb that is a must in any exam. So you must be on the lookout and you must know what is required from you. What is that you need to do if the question, if you are required, if the question requires you to, to, to define. You must give the precise 
I repeat, give precise, brief meaning. And the word brief, very, very important in this case. Brief meaning and features. Okay? So you just need to give the precise. You don't need to beat around the bush. Here you need to go straight to the point and just give the definition briefly. Okay? Uh, we continue with uh, the action verbs. Uh, the verb demonstrate. Simply show by example or examples. That's what it means to demonstrate. And then we have the verb describe. Describe. You, uh, you provide detailed features for and against. So you are digging deep into details in order to provide details and detailed features for and against. That's what it means to describe. So you must not confuse between describe and de uh, define because these are the more common verbs that are used in exam. So you must be careful not to confuse the two. You go separate ways in terms of understanding, then you'll be able to demonstrate or be able to um, answer as per question. And then we have the verb determine. What does it mean? You must use provided information to work out the answers. The information is already provided, so you have to utilize that particular information that's provided in order for you to reach or to work out the answer. And then the other verb, it's uh, distinguish. What is that you have to do? If you are taught to distinguish in an exam, so you are going to describe two phenomena, and what you are going to do, you must make sure that you clearly give differences of the two phenomena that are given. So describe those two phenomena. There must be two. There's no way you can distinguish one. It should be two items two phenomena, and then you have to give the difference of the two. What are the difference? So that's the word distinguish. Um, and then we continue, we still continue with our action verbs. They are very, very important, as I have said. Once you understand the verb, the meaning of that particular verb, you are not going to struggle to answer the questions because you know precisely what is required from you. And then the verb that we have there is estimate. If you are to, est to estimate, you must give the impact of something. As simple as that. The impact. What impact does something have on others? Evaluate. If you are evaluating, or if the, qu the question asks you or requires you to evaluate, so you are going to determine the value of something as per set criteria determine the value of something as per set criteria. There must be criteria already set. So now you determine the value of that particular item according to the criteria that are presented. And we come also to the popular one. It's usually in an exam, so you must master this one. Explain. What, that, what is that you need to do? You need to describe by indicating relationships between things. As simple as that. Describe by indicating the relationships between things. And then find, calculate, measure, and determine. So that's the meaning of the word find. Uh, we still continue with the verbs. And we have verb identify. Identify can also be uh, a, a verb used in exam, so you must know what is that required from you, what is that you need to do if you are to identify. You should recognize a name. Very simple. Recognize a name. Recognize a name. And then the verb illustrate. Illustrate. You describe something, explain the meaning of, of graphical information. Describe something, explaining or ex explain the meaning of graphical information. We still continue with the verbs. They are a lot, but they are all important because you need to master all of them as they are going to be utilized in order to construct the question. Usually, usually at the very beginning of the question, we start with the verb, and that's the verb that carries 
value and that's the verb that you need to concentrate for you to answer the question. That's what you should look at first before you start answering the question. Examine. What does it mean? If you are to examine, if the question requires you to examine, you should identify detailed features of something. Detailed. Identify detailed features of something. And then the other verb is list. Very, very straightforward. Pre present a list of facts, names, subjects. It's, it's, it's straightforward to the point and it, it's not uh, something um, that it's more um, detailed. It's just a list of things or of items. And then the other verb is uh, outline. If you are asked to outline, which also can also be quite common and popular uh, verb in constructing a question, is to give an overview and indicate the main features. Give an overview and indicate main features. Important also. And then we come to the other verb, uh, uh, summarize. Summarize, you should focus on main ideas. And you don't need to give examples. You just focus on the main ideas. If the question comes that way, so that's how you are going to handle it. Um, now we are going to um, start with the presentations. I know um, the bus and the DPPE, you don't have the same modules. They are different. In my presentation, I'm trying to marry the two, trying to bring the items or the topics that are in uh, DPP E, and then the items that are in bus. So your concentration here, please take note. If you hear something here in my presentation, it does not reflect or it does not appear in your modules. Don't worry because it's for the other students that are either doing BERS or DPPE. That must be clear. Don't be bothered and don't worry and then uh, kill yourself over this. If the information that's presented here and does not belong, it does not appear in your module, you should not worry. It's either, if it's not for birth, then it's for DPPE. So you just concentrate on the items that are basically in your book, in your module. I believe this is very clear. Okay. Um, for the presentation, you, you, you should not really, we, we might not really give all the necessary details in that particular item. But as a student, I present something, you go and dig deep down and have an understanding of what is this, of what it entails, of what it contains etc. So we, we, we might not go in details, but I will just give you a hint and then we'll be able to see. Okay, so I need to pay attention to this. Okay. Um, there comes our verbs that I was referring to that we use the verbs in order to start a question, in order to construct a question. Look at this. Define the following terms. Define. You must know what is that word mean. Define. What is that you are doing? Remember we said you should give the precise, precise, brief meaning of that particular word. Religion. We talk about religion. Uh, how do you understand that? What does that mean? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you should not be uh, uh, confined to your module only, but you should have wider understanding by consulting different books. Do we go to the library? Do we read? Do we explore the net? So it's quite crucial. As a teacher, even in your teaching, as a, as a professional someone, 
you should not only be confined to the book that's given to you, a textbook, and then you read for the learners in the textbook, but you need to explore more information in order to know and also widen your understanding as a teacher. So you should not only do this because you want to pass exam and then you graduate from Iowa, but to expand your knowledge because no, as a, a teacher is a source of knowledge. You must have different knowledge and must have different backgrounds in the subject that you are given, that you are given as a teacher. Okay, the word religion. So what does that mean? How do you understand it? So you should go back to your books and then get, the, get to the core of this religion in general, a better understanding. But remember what you are doing here is to define, get the definition, get the meaning of this particular word. So you should not expect me to go and say, religion is uh, uh, the, the, the beliefs that we believe, because it, 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 it might appear a spoon feeding, but you should have an understanding. As I said, I'm going to give you a hint on some items. Maybe some we might go in details a bit, but it's up to you. I give you a hint, you explore the venues, and then find out what each contains, or unpack, unpack that particular word. But don't forget, we are looking at the verbs. The verbs must dictate us, the verbs must lead us, ancestors. We talk about ancestors. What are we referring to? What are we talking about? Humanity. Humanity or humanness. What is that we are referring to? And then we have about personal development. We have the, 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 the word or the, the, the term. Personal development is combined. Personal development goes as this one. What does it mean? Self-image, you know, these are basic words that you should understand, that you should explore and be able to answer the question that is asking about this. The definitions continue, we have emotional intelligence. So these vocabularies, you should know them. Assertiveness, what is that if you are saying assertiveness? What are we referring to? What are the values? Values. Self-esteem. Respect. You, you know, these are not strange words. These are words that are in your books and the definitions are there. As I said, if, for example, emotional intelligence is not in a BES book, then you should not stress if you are doing that course. It must belong to DPPE. And DPPE, if you don't have respect as a verb, don't stress. It does not belong to you. So the students that are doing BES have to deal with this. So ladies and gentlemen, these are some of the verbs that you should find their meanings and be able to say it, not only copying and pasting from the books, but wider understanding, as long as the Understanding is clear if you are talking about emotional intelligence, so it doesn't really matter. You should have, first of all, you should have that understanding on your own. What is emotional intelligence? What's assertiveness? What, is, what are values? What are self -esteem? Then maybe you go back to the book and then make the comparisons. The meaning that you get from the internet, for example, you match it with the meaning that is given in a book, and then you marry the two, then you have an understanding. Don't memorize. It doesn't help. But you should have a clear understanding. But it doesn't mean that you should go astray, and then you give the meaning which is not really the meaning of a particular word. That's what I'm saying. You go to the internet, you use the dictionary, then you match what did they say in the book. Maybe in the book is too way limited, then you can expand it just to demonstrate that you know what you have read, not only memorizing or limiting yourself to the confined meaning in a module, but wider, have that wider understanding, you demonstrate it. And that's the meaning of being a teacher. Um, 
some the, 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 you know in Namibia we have different types of religions. Maybe this brings you now to a better understanding of what is a religion, as uh, it was uh, alluded to in the previous uh, slide. Um, Christianity, you know, Christianity is quite common in Namibia as type of religion, you know. There are a lot, but here we are talking about the most common ones that are found in Namibia. Okay, Christianity, let's say 90% of the Namibian people are Christians. Okay, we talk about Christianity, Judaism, it's also common in Namibia, it's a head, it's practiced here and there. And Islam, it's also one of uh, the religions in our country, Buddhism. It's also happening in Baha'i faith. So these are the five common uh, regions in Namibia. You can read about them just to expand uh, that and have also a clear understanding of Christianity. How does it work? What do they believe in? If you're talking about Judaism, where, what is that they are talking about? What are their common uh, um, uh, belief when it comes to this particular religion, Islam, uh, Buddhism, and Baha'i faith. So you should, because they are practiced in your country, and as a teacher, you are, we are living in a multicultural and multi-religious society where people are, uh, are having different beliefs. Because you cannot just go in the class and you're only talking about Christianity because you are a Christian yourself. You should have an understanding of what is Judaism, of, of, or what is Islam, or what is Buddhism, or Baha'i, Baha'i faith. As a teacher, widen your knowledge and your understanding. Don't only confine yourself that, uh, and say, no, I'm a Christian, so I have nothing to do about Baha'i faith. It, it's not my belief, it's not my religion. But the kids that you are teaching in the class, they are from different religious backgrounds. And you should talk about all of this. You know, we are talking about um, uh, inclusivity. So we should make sure that everybody will feel at home, not only one religion that you should preach about in the class, but you should talk about all of them f so that you can accommodate all the learners from different religious backgrounds. So it's very, very important. So ladies and gentlemen, these are the most common ones, even though we have some that are not, uh, um, we might have some that are not listed here. Um, the point is, these are the most common five uh, regions that are practice, practiced in Namibia. Okay, we can talk about now religion in two perspectives. So, what is the role of religion in society? What does it do? Why do we need religion in a society? Perhaps to shape up, perhaps to make sure that uh, things are done in a pro uh, procedural manner, perhaps is to, uh, you know, the, the sense of belongingness. Somebody wants to belong to a certain region, that I'm a Christian, I serve God, and we talk about Jesus Christ, we talk about uh, Holy Communion, etc., etc. So you must know what is the role of religion in society? Does it play a major role? So you go back. Then we talk about Sabbath. This is, um, um, you know, as I said, we should understand inclusivity, and we should not, we should not only talk about if, 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 if for example, you you believe in Sabbath, you go to church on Saturday only because that's what you believe. That's what your religion is teaching is emphasizing on, it doesn't mean that you should not know about Christianity. So here, Sabbath, you should have an understanding of this as a teacher, because you need to talk about it. You should not boast about your own religion and ignore other people's religion, because, you know, religion is such a sensitive, um, sensitive uh, topic in, all, in society. So you should be careful to balance all of them. But you can only balance if you understand. But you can only understand if you do the research and get the information and keep it at hand. Because I have said it earlier, a teacher 
is a source of information, source of knowledge. And then you need to share it in a professional manner. And then Passover, Passover, uh, what is it? You go back to your books, explore more information on Passover. Who celebrates it? Where? How does it work? What is involved? You talk about it. Christmas. Hmm? Christmas. Not everybody celebrates it. But as a teacher of life orientation, life skills, you should know what is Christmas. What happens? Because you should talk about it. Just to create that awareness. Not necessarily that you are represented for your own church, but you are doing it because it's part and parcel of the syllabus of the curriculum. And Good Friday as well as Easter. Okay, talk about this. It's, Namibia is quite, quite common. You might have more information than what the book says, as long as that information is correct. Uh, we are still going into religion, into perspectives. Um, we talk about Holy Communion. What is Holy Communion? Who does take Holy Communion? For example, we talk about um, in Catholic, people do go for Holy Communion and the Mass. We talk about, the, uh, for example, here yeah, the Evangelical Church. Most people get this Holy Communion during Sundays. Uh, but what is the reason eh? when you are eating that bread or when you are drinking that wine? What does it mean? They said uh, that the wine that you drink is the blood of Jesus. That's now in Christianity perspective. And then the bread that you eat, you are eating the body of Christ according to Christian perspective. So you should have this uh, knowledge and understanding. Persecution of Jesus, what happens? What happens? I said, you are not doing it in the classroom because you are a pastor or because it's your religion. That's the belief of your religion. You are doing it because it's part and parcel of the syllabus. And you need to talk about it. What happened? If you're talking about the persecution of, of, of Jesus, what happens? You should read more and ex, explore and expand your knowledge. Explore information to expand your knowledge. Christian values, if you're talking about Christian values, what are those values? What are the values that Christians are taking into consideration? Maybe praying, maybe going to church, maybe living according to the Bible teachings, etc. So you should explore that information. The region in the classroom, I've spoken earlier about this because um, your class as a teacher, you have learners from different religious backgrounds. So I spoke about inclusivity. You must be careful because we are living in a mild religious society. And people are given their rights by the Constitution of the Republic of Namibia to practice their own religion without fear or discrimination. They can freely do that. So now in the classroom, do not discriminate. Religion in the classroom must be... I'm not saying you must bring in uh, the praying and the fasting and stuff and so forth, but as part and parcel of the curriculum or the syllabus, learners sh should be allowed, they should not be discriminated because they belong to A region or B region. But, you know, as I said, as a teacher, you must play your cards quite careful because you must be able to accommodate all learners from different religious backgrounds. In your talking, what you are saying out must make sure you must make sure that you control it to be accommodative. You should also learn about what do they say when they say loving others according to the Bible. Perhaps you'll be able to um, um, quote what the Bible said about it. You know, this, what we are talking about here, 
I said, not, it's not because everybody read the Bible and they respect what's in the Bible. I know some people read, um, they, they have different uh, beliefs, uh, etc. But uh, our syllabus dictates us to look at that. Okay, um, we talk about values. Values is also one of the topics that is um, um, appearing in your books. So you should understand values into perspective as a teacher or as a student of life orientation life skills. Society values. Each society has its values. It is it has its values that it respects. It has its values that it adheres to. Each society is made up of its values. What are the values, the values of the society? So you should know what are the values of the society. And values in Namibian laws. Namibia as a country has its laws. And those laws have values. And those values must be known and must be respected by the citizens of the country. So what are the values then that we are talking about? Um, each society lives, as I have indicated earlier, lives according to values as well as norms. There are norms. There are norms that you value as an individual of a particular society, of an individual of a certain country, that's Namibia for, uh, to be specific. So you are expected to live according to certain values. Let's say the dressing code, perhaps, um, the way you should carry yourself in, in the community, what are the people looking at, what are they liking about it, what is not acceptable. <coughs> what is not acceptable, etc. So these things, or these items, they need your attention as a student of life orientation and life skills. Because what, what you should teach values, you, sh you should teach norms. Don't just say, no, that's about the community, it's not my baby, but as a teacher, you know, you must multitask. You teach the values and norms of community, different community, not only your community. As, um, as I said, we are living in a multicultural society, people from different backgrounds, um, uh, cultural backgrounds. They are, what matters in one culture might not be matter in the other culture. For example, what matters in Ovaherero maybe, it's common, in, it, it, it's, it's, it's fine with the Vambos or with the uh, Kavangos or with the brushes or with the colors or, you know, etc. or whites. And what it, I have uh, just spoken about this, values to be taught to children. What are the values to be taught to the children? Because, you know, imagine you are a grade one or grade zero teacher, and these kids, they, they, they might not understand others in terms because they are not from the same house or they are not from the same uh, background, cultural background. Uh, they, are, they, are, they, they are from different tribes. So your role as a teacher, you should bring all these values and norms from different uh, tribes. You bring them together to create that awareness and to make sure that all the children understand one another. In this way, they'll be able to accept others and accommodate them because they know, oh, the, 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 this culture respects this. And in my culture, it's not the case. But the will be able to understand and will be able to accommodate and accept others once that creation, uh, 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 that room is created by the teacher. It should be your responsibility as a teacher. Okay, uh, we move on to general issues that are in your books. As I said earlier, if you find out a slide that 
that's presented here and it does not appear anywhere in your module you should not bite off your fingers because it's either for BES or BES or DPPE so you should not worry and say no this does not appear in my book it's the other way around because it's you know the information that I'm presenting here is taken from two different books so that's for the BERS and for the DPPE so if one does not appear in your book so please do not worry because it should appear in the other one and vice versa uh, we talk about family financial responsibilities what are the family financial responsibilities L let's give a scenario for example uh, the results of grade 12 has, have been reached and it's time for the students or for the pr people that have completed grade 12 to register now for varsity be it, be it uh, for example in Namibia NAS or IOL or um, UNM or IUM or VTCs or any other recognized um, institutions in the country. So the family has to make sure that that particular individual who completed grade 12 has to go to varsity and cannot go free of charge because uh, univers university education in Namibia is not free like primary and secondary education. So this person needs to be fin financed. By who? By the family. If the person did not get a loan, for example, maybe the person needs to pay a registration, maybe get a loan later or a scholarship, then it's the responsibility of the family to make sure that they finance that. So that is the understanding that you should have. Uh, there's just an exa one example that I've given, but there are various uh, family financial responsibilities that you can think of and you can utilize that uh, understanding or experience. The other information is preparing for an interview. What if you are preparing for an interview, what is that you need to do to prepare for an interview to make sure that you make it? Because today you are a teacher, tomorrow you want to become head of department for a certain um, um, uh, uh, field of studies. After that, after being an HOD, you want to be promoted to the post of a principal. Uh, perhaps if you are a principal already, you want to become an um, uh, inspector of education, you know, to get that uh, car allowance and other benefits. Um, or perhaps you want to become a debut director or a director. So you need to prepare for an interview. And what is that you need to prepare? So there are a lot of things. There are a lot of uh, information that you need to prepare for. Be it, you know, the dressing, how to dress. Be it the information related to um, uh, the, your job, your jo the position that you want to take, uh, etc. So what are the... Um, the tips that you need to take into consideration for you to prepare for an interview in order to, you know, to win that job, to win the panel of uh, judges that are going to that are going to ask you, to, are going to hammer you with questions. So you need to prepare nicely. But what is that you need to prepare? So you need to explore more information on this. Improving self-image and self-esteem. Many people, especially the teenagers. They do not have self-esteem. They do not have self. Their self-image is quite low. How to improve? What are the um, the mechanism that you need to uh, to employ to make sure that the self-esteem of an individual is built? You, in your position, you are a teacher. Perhaps yourself do not have self-esteem. Perhaps your self-image is quite low. Perhaps you don't believe in yourself. You don't believe that you can. For example, if you are going for an interview, you must have that self-esteem. You should have that driving force and believing in yourself that, yes, I can and I'm able. So if yours is up to standard, what about the children? What about the learners that you are teaching. So you need to give them coaching tips that they need to take into consideration in order to build their self-image as well as their self-esteem. Um, we talk about traditional healers in Namibia. What does the government say? I 
I know there's an association in Namibia where uh, traditional healers have to belong. And of lately, in the newspapers we have read, and once uh, while we are there talking about newspapers, as a teacher, you should acquaint yourself with the current affairs, what is happening in your country, because in this way, you will be able to tackle any question that com comes your way. If, for example, it's general, because not all the questions are taken from the, the study guide. Some questions can be general, but you can only, you are only, you only be able to tackle these questions if you have acquainted yourself with your, the environment, with current affairs. Okay, now I'm talking about traditional healers in Namibia. Of lately, in the newspapers, there were cases of foreign uh, traditional healers, self-proclaimed tra traditional healers that were doing things that are immoral one way or the other. Uh, now, what does the government say? What is really happening about the traditional healers in Namibia? Are they acceptable in our, in, in our country? On what conditions? So please, read more about this and then you explore or you enrich yourself with this information. Then we'll be able to answer questions um, of that nature should they ask about the traditional healers in our country. And then general good to relationship. That's the general good to relationship that I'm talking about is building it you and people around you. People around you, let me say, it's at work. You are a principal or you are a teacher or you are an NHOD, but as a teacher you don't, teacher A does not speak to teacher B. Uh, what picture is it giving? Because, excuse me, tomorrow you have a program but you need to go to teacher A, but you are not in speaking terms. So there should be ways and means of building good relationship with your fellows. And this is the same information that you need to pass to the learners in your class. Teach them to have that good relationship. They should build it. But they should only build it if they are guided. By who? By you as a teacher. Benefits of forgiving someone. What do we benefit if we forgive a certain person? Uh, they, you know, there are issues at schools, at the workplaces. As I said, teacher A does not speak to teacher B. What are you gaining in the process? Ask yourself. Ask the learners in your class. If learner A does not speak to learner B, what are you gaining in the process? But what are the benefits? If you forgive someone, because in any environment where we are, you should expect somebody to step on your toes. And you cannot say, I will never speak to this person forever. If you are doing that, what about the learners? What about the kids at home? So the benefits, there are many benefits of forgiving an individual person. For example, it gives you a peace of mind. Now, I couldn't speak to this person for ages, but now we are in speaking terms. You can breathe. You can say hi. You can communicate to, to anyone because you should not hold grudges against the other person. And as I said, the teacher, you should know this, and then you should pass it on to the learners. Okay, then we talk about types of weddings. We have different types of weddings. They are there in your books. What are the type of weddings that we have in, um, that we experience, that we see, or that we read about? The, a person's emotions and feelings, everybody has emotions, everybody has feelings. You should read more about this. What are those emotions and what are the feelings that we are referring to here? Disagreeing assertively, you know, some people are straightforward in terms of speaking. But if you, if somebody is presenting something and then um, you disagree, you say, no, that's a lie. It, you are hurting the feelings of that particular individual. 
So you should find a way of disagreeing without hurting others. I remember when I was a teacher, when I was head of the department at one of the highest schools in Namibia, uh, certain, uh, the principal was presenting something, and then this lady said, Sir, what you said, a teacher, what you said is very stupid. You know, the principal took it this way that you are saying, you are accusing me, you are saying I'm stupid. But the teacher said, but I said what you said is stupid. You know, the, this, uh, this way, the feelings of the principal is hurt by this particular teacher because the person did not disagree assertively. So it's very, very important to disagree it's, 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 calm. it's normal to disagree, but we should disagree assertively. assertively. Read more about this, and then you understand what I'm trying to say. As I said, we do this for the learners also, and then we also do it for ourselves, disagreeing assertively. Because if you have started with, through IOL, now you, will know, you should not disagree with any other person who has not gone through the subject of life skills or life orientation life skills because you were taught how to disagree assertively. What you learn in this course, you must be able to pass it on or to, 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 to exercise it because you have learned something, you, you bring it and then you utilize it. Win-win attitude. We have a lot more on this case, but I am directing you to go and read about it. You should have an understanding of what is win-win attitude, lose-lose attitude, win-lose attitude. So go to your modules and then explore more information on this. The danger of using alcohol and drugs. What danger is involved? Uh, we not dwell much about this. I want you to explore the venues and have a better understanding of the danger of using alcohol and drugs and then utilize it in your classroom. Inform, educate the learners about this. Don't just do it, as I said earlier, don't just do it for examination purposes that I want to pass graduate, but you should also pass it on to the learners in your class. And then you should also, you know, we shouldn't conclude that, okay, these issues of HIV and STDs uh, have uh, reached the ceiling. It, it has hit the ceiling and we shouldn't talk about it. What about the children that are just being born that do not have the information, the learners that do not have information? Um, um, about HIV AIDS, it's how it's spread and what are the um, uh, preventative mechanisms. So we should not say it is expired and we don't need to talk about it. It should never expire and we still need more information about this. Sometimes we tend to say, uh, no, I know much about HIV AIDS, but we don't. And as the years go by, we should explore more information and then, because you know, the, 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 the virus is also getting clever and clever now and then since there are a way of uh, hitting it, so it's, you know, we should explore more information about this. And then we talk about crime. Uh, we are living in a criminal uh, society where we are surrounded by people that are snatching bags and organized crime, of course, and corruption, uh, you know, it's also part of, of, of crime. So you should have a, a, an understanding on this. As I said, you should acquaint yourself with the current affairs. What is happening? What are the corruption cases that are being reported? Because in writing, in exam, you can refer to these cases uh, that are common that are happening in our societies. Self-confidence, you should also know about this, how to build it, what is it, how does it work, and how should learners, why should learners have self-confidence, what benefits uh, does it have, etc. Bullying, bullying is very, very common in schools among the children, but it can also be common among the staff members. There are bullies, you know, a bully is always a bully. 
you know it, it depends on the levels there are levels of bullies now bullies the primary bullies and secondary bullies at work at uh, the offers uh, bullying in general what is that and how how can it be handled just to make sure that all the learners feel uh, feel at home when they're in a classroom when they're in a school environment how to curb it in schools because you know once the learner is bullied it's likely the learner is not going to perform so you should now get information on this and then the negative social behaviors is connected to the other information that uh, i have presented on um, um so the, the values in the society what are the negative social behaviors that are not acceptable in in, in your society and then problem solving in general how do we solve the problems uh, but we start from the classroom as a teacher how do you solve the problems among us the learners you and the fellow teacher or the principal or the head of the department you and the community at large you know in general how do we solve problems how do we go about it um, then we also talk about the healthy eating habits or nutritional eating um, talk about junk foods for example what what are the nutritious food because you know a teacher I said you are multitasking you are playing many roles um, some parents imagine that uh, in the classroom one child comes with KFC and the other one comes with um, perhaps uh, conflict uh, the other one comes with uh, biscuits, the other one comes with bread. You know, as a teacher, you, be a, you must be able to distinguish which one is more nutritious and which one is more recommended so, uh, for, the, for the learners to, uh, to eat and advise the parents also. How to prepare for a budget? Very, very important. Starting with your own budget as a teacher. How do you prepare? What are the steps that are involved? Okay, etc. How to save money? teaching the children how to save money and uh, perhaps you don't need this education but you need the information on how to save money and ha handling conflict in a positive way how do we go about it and um, cannot handle conflict in a negative way but there must be a positive way of dealing with conflict the procedures that are involved be it in the classroom with the learners, the conflict that are appearing between parents and teachers or teachers and uh, and the principals, you know, this uh, office politics, etc. And how to manage stress. Everybody gets stressed because, you know, sometimes you come from home, you are stressed and bring that frustration and then you hit it on the learners. There must be a way of how to manage it because it will always be there. Or it's not um, uh, eradicating it, but actually managing how to manage it how to make it more better that is not going to affect those that are not really involved uh, 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 <coughs> a directory and we talk about gender-based violence in Namibia very very rampant it's quite quite common you find gender-based violence uh, cases being reported and you wonder it's really happening uh, be it many to women or women to men, etc. Even though when the man is beaten by the wife, that's not a report, does not have that uh, audacity or, or that confidence to go and to report it. And, you know, these are issues that are happening in Namibia, but kids must be taught at a very young age uh, on how to uh, avoid oh, these issues of uh, gender based violence. And competences, performance, and professional contact of a teacher. Um, you know, as a teacher, you, there are code of contact that you need to adhere to on um, a dressing code, on uh, just general behavior at work, and what you should consider and uh, to, 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 to adhere to, and etc. You know, and what are the offenses that are involved what if you do these uh, what is going to happen to you you should know about this as a teacher and you should read read i recommend you to have a copy of the code of conduct for teachers it's very very important time management it's also one of the aspects that's very very important because you know uh, some people come reporting to work uh, late what are the consequences what is very involved so uh, 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 read about that. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've spoken at length. Um, what I would like to advise you is uh, prepare thoroughly for examination. It's quite, quite important. Don't read at the last minute and you won't be prepared and you will be nervous in the exam room. So you need to revise all the units. And once more, go back to verbs. Those verbs that we have spoken about at the very beginning, they are in your modules. You read about them and have an understanding. You should have an understanding of each of these verbs, as I have said earlier, and uh, answer precisely what is asked. And then you should utilize the experience that you have so far. Some of you have been teaching for some time, even though perhaps you don't have qualifications that the ministry requires, but you are on the way to getting that. If you prepare what you have gone through, then definitely you are not going to disappoint yourself. Um, something that I would like to emphasize is please do not leave any question unattended in the exam. It's very, very important. Try, attempt. Um, all the best of luck. Uh, you can reach me on my mobile 0811480977 or 0812531801. I've also an email. You can drop in email, which most of the people do not really do. T underscore Thank you very much for listening and all the best.